market structure in which a few large firms, each with a degree of market power, sell either standardized or differentiated products is called an oligopoly. The firms in an oligopoly are known as oligopolists. Because no single firm may dominate the entire market, there's limited competition, unlike a monopoly, which has no competition. Oligopolies are common in markets that have high barriers to entry, like economies of scale, scarce resources, government regulation, or long-term agreements with suppliers and distributors. These factors make it difficult for new firms to enter the market. Markets with existing firms that have economies of scale of production are difficult for new firms to break into because they must start with less efficient, smaller scale production operations. Extremely high startup costs make it difficult for new firms to enter the market. In industries such as pharmaceuticals, research and development costs are extremely high, which also deters new entrants. When existing operators control a scarce resource, for example, if a small number of firms control all the docks at a seaport, it is difficult for newcomers to compete in the same location. Government regulations, like the need for a broadcasting license to set up a television broadcasting station, may limit the number of opportunities for potential entrants. When existing firms have long-term agreements with suppliers of production inputs and distributors of the product, newcomers may not be able to break into the supply and distribution chain easily, especially when such an agreement includes a clause that explicitly prohibits suppliers from working with other customers. Oligopolistic firms can also take active measures to keep out new entrants, including utilizing product differentiation, advertising, customer loyalty schemes, branding, predatory pricing, predatory acquisitions, and vertical integration. Economists measure the degree to which oligopolistic firms dominate a market with a concentration ratio, which is the percentage of market share controlled by a given number of firms. For example, a four-firm concentration ratio is the share of the total market held by the four largest firms in the industry. If there are only four firms in that industry, the four-firm concentration ratio is 100% and would be considered highly concentrated. Here are some examples of oligopolistic industries and their four-firm and eight-firm concentration ratios. Given the size and status of the firms in an oligopoly, each firm has to consider the response of the others to any move it makes. This means that oligopolists' actions are mutually interdependent. If one firm increases its prices, it will have to estimate the likelihood that its rivals will match that increase. Failure to consider the rival's response could result in losses as customers switch to the good or service of the cheaper supplier. There is often a level of informal collusion, such as price leadership, which is legal in the United States because the firms are not necessarily working together directly. Formal collusion, where firms directly work together to raise prices, is illegal in the United States and Europe. The easiest version of an oligopoly to analyze is a market with only two firms, known as a duopoly. This basic form of an oligopoly is the closest that a market can get to becoming a monopoly. Competition is less than perfect because there is no easy entry for competitors into the marketplace and consumers have very limited choice. To the extent that the two firms in a duopoly succeed in differentiating their products, they can exercise virtual monopoly power over their segment of the market. For example, Coca-Cola and Pepsi maintain customer loyalty by stressing the difference between their main beverages, even though the beverages have close similarities. Because consumers might otherwise consider the two alternatives to be perfect substitutes, both companies have invested heavily in advertising focused on maintaining brand loyalty. The two companies also have exclusive distribution agreements with many distributors. If such brand loyalty is strong, consumers will not switch to the alternative product even when one of these firms raises its prices and the other does not. If the two dominant firms compete by lowering prices, they may enter into a price war, which is where the two companies would eventually lower prices to the cost of production and would make no economic profits. Competition in a duopoly, therefore, often takes other forms, such as loyalty schemes, delivery discounts, or advantageous credit terms. Price fixing and price wars can occur in other oligopolies besides just duopolies if more than two companies control a large portion of market share. If the two firms in a duopoly collude to manipulate the market, they act as a monopoly with all of the attendant negative effects on competition. 
Game theory models provide effective analyses of decisions made by firms in a duopolistic market, and by extension, in other oligopolistic markets. These models situate a firm's possible reactions to its competitors' initiatives, such as price reductions. Duopolies can be difficult and expensive to maintain over the long term, and people's tastes change and technologies advance, both of which make it easier for new firms to enter the industry and compete. If a duopoly is able to work together and collude, they can act as a single monopolist and earn high profits. For a more general oligopoly with more than two firms, the business owners may be able to form a cartel to restrict output, maintain higher prices, and maximize their joint revenue. Such collusion is usually formalized in an explicit agreement, which may or may not be published. Cartel agreements are fragile, in part because they are often illegal. The agreements are at risk of being canceled if the authorities discover them. In the United States, the 1890 Sherman Antitrust Act bans this type of collusion that leads to cartels. But enforcement of this act and other antitrust legislation can be difficult. A common type of cartel is one where producers allocate territories to each of their members so they become local monopolies. Cartels are illegal in many countries. To evade antitrust legislation, Firms may form cartels in ways that are difficult to detect, such as setting common technical standards among producers to limit competition. International cartels that are agreed between national authorities may be tolerated even by other countries that ban cartels on their own soil simply because they are too powerful to outlaw. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, known as OPEC, the largest cartel in the world, is a prominent example. OPEC meets periodically to influence the international price of crude oil by limiting or expanding national production quotas. A cartel is inherently unstable because producers gain from breaking the agreement. Cartels maximize profit for the group, but if a member of the cartel sees opportunities for its individual profits to increase by breaking its agreement with the cartel, it can do so. For example, if OPEC agrees to collectively cut oil production to raise the price of oil, one of its member countries can obtain higher profits by expanding output and selling it at that higher price.